back at it again with the Shopify tutorials. Yes! I'm actually very, very excited to get this video out there and actually, actually start talking about Shopify and get into more Shopify tutorials. I'm going to get into detail in the next few videos about the process of building a brand from scratch for solopreneurs and anyone really trying to grow a business on the internet or with the internet and that's pretty much my whole thing showing you how to get your bag and create quality content all at the same time. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys everything it takes to get a Shopify website ready for launch. And personally, this website has taken me a lot longer than I think like future Shopify tutorials are going to be are going to take in the future just because these are my own personal websites versus you know creating a website for fun i feel like perfection was really something that well obviously like something that i really tried to i just really wanted to make it as appealing as possible um but also everything had to work navigation had to work and like a developer website you don't have to necessarily have all the navigations working you just want it to show like the home page or something like that just everything had to work everything had to be filled or at least somewhat filled or um it just had to be ready to go live and i still have a lot to add to it i need to add some templates that i'm going to be working on this week along with a lot of things i'm just really excited to get this tutorial out there i didn't really talk about seo too much in here and that's a subject obviously i really want to get into more i did do a product descriptions i have about 80 products that i need to fill in their product descriptions and i will be talking about that more and that's the tutorial that i want to talk about more because setting up websites product product descriptions take me forever it's just like writing little essays you have to do research and stuff like that or it's just you just want to educate your customers about the product but also making it appealing and seo friendly it's just like a whole job in itself so um i just want to talk about that and how i plan to do that i still have a lot, a lot of products to add to my shopify that are just sitting in the drafts so that would be my next step but as long as it's live i am happy and that's all that matters i just really want you to take note of the process and how you can really use your resources to build a website and you don't need pretty much anybody else and you can create one by yourself and my um even though these are my personal websites or my future shopify tutorials i would just want to talk about specific niches like maybe you're a content creator how would you set up a website for being a content creator what kind of products would you sell or if you are thinking of selling drop shipping printify products and you're an artist well, how would you set up a website then like what will your website navigation look like what can you put on there if you don't want to have a blog or you want to have a blog just really i just really want to talk about it and really give people inspiration to set up their websites and really have quality websites i really just really quality websites we want everybody to get their bag so this is just going to be one of my focuses and even though i really want to perfect everything on my website it doesn't mean i won't for future tutorials i really like creating things i just um feel perfection was just just obviously something um specifically when building my own website and yeah that's just how it goes even though competition is rising in the e-commerce internet business world you you have the chance to differentiate yourself from everybody else's websites I, like there's so many websites popping up it's crazy but you can differentiate yourself from all the competition just by making a visually appealing website and really making your landing page stand out really just gotta put in some time and effort you know you can launch your website in a couple of hours but always go back and update it it's always going back and making your work better than it is so many times 
my my things have come out bland and it's just I go back and I keep on getting better and better and that's um, just with like content just keeps on getting better more visually appealing versus content and logos I made about a year ago it's just just gotta keep on putting effort always keep on going um, updating because a, a logo can always look better a logo or your website can always look better it could always use new information and it could always use updated information you always want to update you just always want to update you always want to be on top of your shit if you have a website so like you just want your customers to you just want your customer uh, customers to keep coming to your website there's new products something to be excited about something to read about um something to see you know um this that's just how it works yeah just differentiate yourself from the competition and that's simple that's by simple branding and making your landing page stand out you don't need to have any fancy tools and what believe me when i tell you this like i'm gonna say it a million times but canva is all you need a video editing software a phone at the very least but like a laptop would work but like a desktop would be even better i need a desktop but you know we're we all gonna we're all gonna come up together okay the hardest part is done the website is live this tutorial is gonna be live i'm just getting hopefully up and soon up and soon and after this tutorial is goes live i'm gonna get into grind mode and batch content for all my social medias for one to two months and then i can just focus here on the tube and um i'm aiming to get two to three videos out and don't quote me on that but maybe but at least at the very least i'm gonna get one out okay so let's get into this tutorial first things first we created a logo in canva and then i downloaded it uploaded it into shopify and then i adjust the theme and then go from there i copy and paste some of the main color hex codes from canva and use them in the theme and that's for branding purposes on the website and then i also use a lot of black in my web design and that's just that's just the psychology of colors made there's always a mood i want to elicit in a website and it's really important or at least worth doing some research and knowing the psychology of colors in website design. This is gonna help you with everything with content marketing, everything from branding across all your social platforms to making a logo, designing your website and all the elements that go along with it. If you notice, a lot of social media platforms use blue. Why do they use blue? Twitter and Facebook, they use blue. It's meant to give relaxing vibes, make kind of like a escape from the real world, a welcoming escape. That's why it's worth it knowing the psychology of colors at least a little bit. It's something that works and people aren't even aware of it working. It's something that happens that you can just create organic engaging content just by picking simple colors that really would en would engage your audience it's just things that people aren't even aware of of those things that just happen naturally just natural for human beings to be drawn to certain colors shades and color combinations use your resources to your advantage there is so much research to do in this subject alone the psychology of website colors website design the psychology of colors and you just won't be disappointed i would go as far as to say 
This is a form of organic reach, branding, color selections for your co for content marketing. It's also something that would eventually become second nature to you when you're creating social media posts, thumbnails, or even merch designs. Color gives off moods automatically and you want to pick up on that when you're thinking of branding or anything with advertising your content, your brand, your business. It's all about color selection at the end of the day. explain my process for creating creating a website just creating in general it's I just really put things together and create various options for me to choose from my process for creating a website isn't necessarily straightforward there's there's a lot of going back and forth finding out what works and what doesn't and that's just how it goes. I create a logo first to really give me a starting point to develop everything around it. The brand logo has a lot of the main colors that give me further inspiration to start working on the theme colors, the site typography, which are the fonts of the website. Everything really just sort of bounces off from one another and inspires the next step. When I start a website, there's just so much to do that I really start with, I really just start with design to inspire all of the other components of the website. I may really have a basic idea or not really know anything until I really start working on it. There is no written draft. I don't write anything. Well, I, I have been writing a lot of things down now, but it's not like I sketch something out or there's a draft of the navigation. There's a draft of every page, like all in a folder. It's just, I, I, I just create as I go. But I'm also doing research all at the same time. I'm looking at color palettes to inspire me or looking at typography on Pinterest, on Google. I'm researching about branding and navigation examples on Google. There's a lot of research that goes on on the back end or in any kind of content creation. And sometimes it doesn't come across it in the videos. I do know a lot about business, entrepreneurship, marketing, a lot of things, but there's nothing wrong with fine tuning your knowledge. I'm going to say this a lot here, but use your resources. Your phone is the most powerful tool and almost any question you have can be answered or further advance your knowledge. We love learning over here, okay? <laughs> the rumors are true you can do anything with canva you can even make a whole website with it and pretty much make a whole career off of canva my mouth will run dry talking about canva but girl all i see is pros over here i'm filling my website with stock images in the meantime until I can have my own photos, but we're using our resources over here, like I talked about earlier. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I start working on is the banner. It's basically the introduction to your website and what you're about. 
there are all types of learners out there and a lot of them are visual people most of the people on the internet looking at content are visual people people are just scrolling on websites and you might just have a few seconds to grab an ounce of their attention and so you just need to show them what's up and really really fast this doesn't have to be anything really extravagant all the time but you want your website to be inviting if it's not exactly out there in its color concept you want to have other attributes such as a really cool navigation or just really cool photos your goal is to have people get onto your website and stay on your website your website may not be for every single person but at the very least you aren't turning all of them away So let's get into what I'm doing. I'm removing the image banner and replacing it with an image slideshow. And this is gonna be in Shopify. The image banner has two different images into one banner, like slideshow, like two pictures at once. And the slideshow just gives you more opportunity to show each individual photo as they are. And I just like it like that. As of today, I have two slideshows on the homepage, on my homepage, and I use them both a little bit differently. After I had the banner or slideshow down and finished, I added a few products to my Shopify so it could give me more, like a little bit insight into what I wanted the navigation to look like. Again, those steps bouncing off one another. Um, it just gives me a better idea of what what I want the navigation to look, look like and it's mostly based on the products that I am wanting to sell or going to sell like, and also how I wanted the homepage formatted. Again, my process may be a little bit crazy for someone that wants direct steps or really likes to plan things out ahead but I think my method might be helpful to some organized, but not exactly. Um, there's a method to the madness. A lot of back and forth and fixing, updating, but it's a process nonetheless. It's a rough draft to finished product process or just getting something done. It's not cut and dry or black and white, especially when you're doing all the work yourself. As an entrepreneur, a solopreneur of any kind, you have to wear a lot of hats. Even artists on Instagram, you could say they are content creators. A lot of them know, many of them don't. But being a content creator means by nature that you're pretty much already a video editor, maybe even a social media manager, a content writer, because you have to like, basically write captions for all of your posts, uh, engage with your audience, and then marketers, advertisers, and sometimes they're even actors, you know, they're advertising their product, advertising their brand, advertising themselves, and not necessarily that like they're actors, but they have to um, sometimes uh, you, you've seen some artists on TikTok, they are advertising their brand, they are making relatable posts, funny posts with them, with their products, and it, 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 there's just a lot going in to advertising or marketing your product or branding yourself, marketing yourself and your business. It's all a process. I haven't heard too many people talking about print on demand. 
I do, but not as many as you would think for this type of service. It's almost ingenious. The people I think would benefit the most are artists or graphic designers. You don't need to buy inventory of a design. You have no idea if you're going to sell or how much you're gonna sell. And you can keep uploading designs to your landing pages as soon as you come out with them. And people could just buy as time goes on. So the idea of having sales, yeah, you can have sales to boost sales, but you don't need to have sales to get rid of inventory that you didn't sell. So this is also helpful for anyone trying to find a simple way to make custom products and have no inventory. All you need is a landing page of some sort or just you just need somewhere to sell online. With both Printify and Printful, you can connect your stores to other sh shops. Um, you can sell on Etsy, you can sell on Amazon, you can connect it to your Shopify, you can connect it to your Wix, you can connect it to a lot of places. You can pretty much sell anywhere where it's possible to sell online. If you can't connect your store to there, you can just upload the pictures, download and upload the pictures to the store and your product descriptions, however you want it and want to list it. And there you have it. You just put the order in through Printify or Printful and then just ship it to your customer. When designing Printify or Printful print-on-demand products, you can use either solid or transparent images. The difference between the two is the background. An example of this is in my logo. It has a black background. When I download it in solid, the black background appears. And when I download it in transparent, only the circle of the logo appears on the product I'm designing of my particular logo but just the image or the main image just basically the background the background is not going to come up so any images that you place on top of that background is going to show up and sometimes the having the photo solid depends on the product you choose and sometimes it depends on the image that you have another thing to keep in mind when designing print on demand products and um, and you're not buying a sample beforehand is to make sure your photo quality has a high resolution. You don't want to sell products with blurry images. Both Printify and Printful are going to have the specs for each product and you just need to download your photos according to those recommended sizes. And surprise, another benefit to Canva you can download the image in many formats, but also in various sizes. I'm not sure how many programs offer that, but it just really helps when transferring images and designs into both Printify and Printful, and just makes for a smooth process. If you didn't have Canva, I'm not exactly sure where one would download a logo from, but wherever you're making it or buying it from, getting it from, just make sure the resolution is high. There is a resolution indicator on Printify and on Printful. It's gonna tell you if the resolution or image quality is high or low.
I just want to cut in real quick to say that you can have many logos or especially for merch not necessarily logos but logo designs or designs that resemble your brand your audience may have different tastes and still want to support you so feel free to add options I recycled some banners that I made for my social media platforms and then used them in this next design. My whole brand is not limited into a few designs and it gives me so much potential to really get creative. I do have a theme going on, but there are too many combinations to be limited to just a handful. just experimenting with designs and I wasn't really paying attention to the quality of the images I was downloading. I was but I wasn't at the same time because I wasn't going to publish them to my shop. But when you do download images for print on demand products you almost always need to max out the image size or almost max it out. <laughs>
Okay, so let's explain what's going down over here. So I'm in Canva and I'm making a set of designs for a gaming pad. There's different, or like kind of like a mouse pad, a big mouse pad. There's different images on Canva, but one thing they have in common is that you can edit all of them in some way. Some images or graphics let you change the color like right then and there, it has a little option, the color box, you can change the color. And sometimes you have to edit the image using the tools available in Canva. I try to change most of them so I'm not out here stealing designs. But when I make these videos, sometimes I do use simpler techniques, just grabbing the picture, posting it right onto the print on demand product. It really depends on the photo, the specific photo, if I really like it as is. and. I try to change most of them up, most of them. You can really customize any stock image available on Canva or any graphic that they have, anything that they have. You can also edit any image that you have and have the right to use. We don't encourage stealing from artists on this channel. So just make sure you have the rights to it. It's in the Creative Commons, it's copyright free, you bought it, you have permission to use it. We love that over here. This method of making multiple designs for one print on demand product is something that you can use in your online store to offer multiple options to your customers. The gaming pad is a product I'd especially add to my store because it's a product I'd have in my inventory and also because I'm able to customize it to fit my branding. This particular gaming pad comes in different sizes and I'm able to make some merch designs, but also I can even just make normal products or normal designs for my store without my logo. It's just a really cool product for my store to have and in particular because the gaming pad would also tie in pretty much your whole desk. So if, if you really have a cool design, it was personally something I was shopping for before I designed it. So that's why I really, really invested time in making multiple designs of this one. When I'm making products, like print on demand products, or just adding products or trying to figure out what I wanted to sell, I make things or I pick things that I would want to buy most of the time. And that's just because I'm a shopper. I love to shop, I love to spend my money, but it's got to have a deal, right? My shopping might be a problem at this point. Let me tell you, I'm just a shopper. So I really trust, I guess I trust my taste in some time. I trust my taste, I guess. So at the same time, I'm a particular shopper. I'm comparing prices in the store all the time, or even on the internet, I'm comparing prices everywhere. I'm price checking across different sites to find the best price, but I also want the coolest and nicest things. And I feel like in this era, a lot of people or the buying market, especially the audience that I have in mind, which I guess are people like me. <laughs> but same difference, I think it's good to know what people are looking for when they're out there buying and you're also trying to sell. People want more bang for their bucks nowadays, so we gotta get with the program, okay?
so let's talk drop shipping a little bit. Let's take a walk. So for my store, I'm going to be using a combination of drop shipping apps and eventually on hand products. I cannot handle any on hand inventory in my chaotic life right now, but we will scale up to there eventually. The drop shipping apps that I'm using are AliExpress and also Spocket. And for my store, I'm selling anything related to entrepreneurship, business, and content creation. That covers a lot of area, but some of the main areas I want to hit are background decor as props for content creators or, um, and also props for food photography and like if you want to have cool textures in your photos or um, I'm also going to be selling office decorations and supplies, lighting and electronics, and also planning and productivity products such as calendars or planners. It's an everything store for digital entrepreneurs and content creators or will be. I really base my site's navigation on the products I have and the main ones I want to highlight or showcase. Then I would make collections based on the products I have and I'm able to formulate the navigation again by grouping the products in bigger categories and then titling them. I go back and forth between picking products and creating the navigation because you can't really make labels for a website when you have no idea what products you're going to sell. At the same time, as a solopreneur, making product descriptions can be a process. Like I said before, they're like mini essays. To put into perspective a little bit, imagine you want to have 200 products or even 100 products in your store. That's a lot of essays. Even 20 product descriptions takes a lot of time. Uploading the images, um, taking the images, uh, setting it up for being SEO friendly, hashtags or tags on it um, so it can be found in your store. There's a lot to each product that you post onto your store. So at least getting your main products in there first to start creating an attractive and welcoming website navigation or even homepage, even just something for your customers to look at. You don't need to have all the products in there, but at least start with what you want to be recognized for or the most important products are in there first and have saucy, unique and SEO friendly descriptions. Then as you add products, you can adjust your collections and navigation from there. The most important things for when I pick drop shipping products are the shipping times and also the seller's ratings. This is more in AliExpress shipping more so than Spocket because in Spocket you do not get much insight or any insight into the seller. But my best guess is if the seller received enough complaints or emails complaining about them, they wouldn't be able to sell on Spocket anymore. So it does give me enough confidence to just add products to my store from just, it just makes the process a little bit easier and I have a little bit of faith of just, I still re, do some research into the product, but it just adds, it gives me more confidence to just blindly add the product, not necessarily blindly, but add the product into my store from there. I cannot buy samples for everything, but it just gives me a little bit more confidence boost that I'm adding something that has a little bit um, that I can actually contact the seller or spock it and they would do something versus AliExpress. I don't, nothing can really be done about the seller. Spocket does have really good items, but it really depends on the store you're trying to make and if the subscription is worth it to you. I did start looking at products in the AliExpress dropshipping app, but it was a really time consuming process compared to Spocket. So I just really just started adding products from Spocket to start my store and whatever I don't find on there, I'll add on the AliExpress app later and do more research and invest more time over there. So for this part of the video, I'm just setting up my website navigation and its collections. Navigation and collections go hand in hand. You can't really create one without creating the other. And also at this point, it's 
pretty much necessary slash required to know what products you're selling or what content you'll have on your website besides products. So that can mean adding pages or your social media platforms. In your navigation, you can add a link, a direct link to any of your social media platforms directly. I did that for my channel. Or you can also add a blog, an FAQ page, or any other pages you might create. If you have any trouble thinking of content to add to your website, Google it. There's endless lists for things or ideas for you to add to your website. Pinterest is another way to find more information or find more information when designing your website. If you don't really want to use Google or don't really like reading um, more, it's more visuals. Your website navigation can be a make it or break it type of thing on your website. Not necessarily break it because you can always update it, but it could, it could deter a lot of potential customers or visitors. So I would definitely invest some time into looking up navigation examples for the type of store you're creating or hoping to create. And also take a look at your favorite website's navigations and what qualities of that site make it user friendly or why you like to browse through the sections and what makes it easy to browse through those sections. It's those same qualities you want to emulate in your finished design, your finished website design. I also finished off the navigation and collections by adding some more details in the homepage, but most of this has changed since I recorded the video. And my homepage will probably be changing on a consistent basis for at least the next few months. After you finish the navigation, collection, policies, and necessary pages, you're pretty much ready to launch and go live. There's always more content to add. So it is extremely super duper important to routinely come back and update your website. And after we finish this part up, the navigation, before I go live, I add some affiliate links. As you guys may know, I'm a content creator and will be very affiliated in affiliate marketing. Most of my work uses a lot of different tools that I think my potential audience will benefit from. So having them in there doesn't really clutter my website or at least I think it doesn't. I try a few different methods to get my links in there and you'll see, see how they look differently. But what I want in my website is a good flow. So the banner method I tried at first didn't really fit into this, so I moved on to other methods. I think the method I tried might be better for certain pages or for a blog post, not necessarily a homepage. This is pretty much the last step in my process for finishing a shop and it going live. This is going to be an option for anyone that does any affiliate marketing. This could be for bloggers or vloggers, YouTubers, TikTokers. By having the affiliate links on your homepage or your landing page, you get another chance to market those brands and businesses. In most cases, when you're putting down an affiliate link, it's almost always in a mundane spot. Your video description box or your caption. By having the affiliate link on your landing page, you have more room to creatively offer the affiliate marketing link, product, or service. And I'll show you how.
right guys so i've started to wrap things up on the site and getting it ready to go live like i mentioned for those tuning in my store is live right now as we speak but i'll be spending the next two weeks really hyper focusing on plumping the website up with content and if not the next month or however long it takes and after i finish all the previous steps I do a quick run through of the website to find out exactly what I need to make the site go live. And at this point of the process and in life in general, I just needed to make moves and get things going. So the first thing I needed to finish completing was the main image banner or slideshow. I had picked the pictures I really liked but the demo wording was still the same and the button links weren't linked to any products, pages, or collections. This is pretty normal in the process. You can't really link to any products or pages if you don't have any. It's also helpful to have the navigation somewhat done already and have some product collections already started. And also I find out that the footer isn't done and just like the image slideshow you can't really complete it without having the main navigation complete or not having any pages collections or valuable links to fill the navigation or to fill the footer navigation I also lost all my print-on-demand products somewhere along the way so I quickly make a merch design and found out my navigation was messed up the merch tab was linked to the homepage products instead of the merch collection. Because of this mistake, in the navigation I do another quick check to make sure everything is linked to where it's supposed to be linked. And I also finish a quick merch design and check if everything is working correctly.
So I wrap up my first image slideshow and then I decided to add another because the slideshows just work for what I have going on right now. The second banner has some more affiliate links, another link to products, and another way to get onto my YouTube channel. When I decided to add this second slideshow, I took into consideration where I wanted to send my traffic and also where I was already sending them and what I haven't sent them to yet. I decided to add my YouTube channel again because it never hurts to share my main platform and then I add a printful banner and a stock image that has a direct link to a product collection list. And after that's all said and done, I move on to the footer navigation. When creating my footer, I really just wanted most of the same things I listed in the main navigation, but I renamed most of them, and I also renamed the title of the navigation menus for the footers that were in the main menu. I think it's always important to try to track different people in different ways, so if I didn't catch them with the first title, maybe I'll catch them with the second when they scroll to the bottom. Depot on the B.
Okay, the moment has finally come. The reveal is here. I'm pretty happy with it and as I add a few more products, I'll tweak some more things and you never know, it could be completely different next week. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll keep you posted with some videos of what I add to my website and I'll be talking about SEO, product descriptions, and Shopify a whole lot more. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you get the chance. Catch you in the next one. Bye!